Well, hello monkeys. Welcome back to the circus. Hey, today we're gonna take a look at a whole bunch of knives. <laughs> no, this isn't a box of stuff I got from somebody else. This is a box of my own stuff. This is boxes of my own stuff. This is a tiny part of my collection I keep telling you guys about. Keep kind of teasing it. I've been trying to find all of them to get them together to make a video for you guys. And I still can't find maybe three or four of the knives that go in this little sub collection. But I don't care. You'll kind of get the idea of what it is about two or three knives in. So uh, we'll just take off and kind of kind of start talking about these and see if you guys can pick up what's going on here. But we'll start small and work our way up. You probably recognize this one. It's a pretty common knife in an uncommon version. This is traction coated. Hold on. We got some lighting issues. There we go. Yeah, this is the SE Azula, if you don't recognize that, my edge. This is the Beretta version with the traction coating and all that. Other than the traction coating and the Beretta emblem, it is a standard issue SE. Super sharp, super awesome. Love this knife. Carried this one for quite a while until I got the stainless version I carry now. But... This is the first knife in this sub collection. This is one of the ones I've used, and like I said, my edge, so you know what's up there. But paracord wrapped handle, nothing fancy, no scales on this one or anything. The standard uh, plastic sheath, not Kydex, but the formed, I forget what they call Bolteron. Is, the, is SE the one with Bolteron? Anyway. Essie Azula Beretta version is the first knife in this collection. Let's just go with what's on top. This, some of you may realize, it looks an awful lot like a K-Bar, but it's not. Holy shit, there we go. This is actually, in my opinion, an improvement on the K-Bar. Rust off the edge of that, but... This is the Glock Field Knife. Made by Glock, you can see. This one's seen a little bit of action. Made in Austria, Glock. What is the Glock 78? There is no model number or anything like that. I don't know what the steel is on this one. Um, I think I want to say it's 1095, but it has a Glock logo there on the uh, thing. This little end cap does come out. You get a little bit of storage in in the pommel down here. It is not full tang. It does not feel like the greatest knife ever made. It is designed with a hook so it can be used as a bayonet on something I'm not even going to get into on this channel because it was silly to begin with. So that is it. The Glock Field Knife. Save you for last. How about that? We'll get into one I haven't even carried yet. It's been out of the box once or twice just to kind of take a look at it and show it off. Let's get that box out of the way anyway. This is the CRKT Ruger Cordite. So. It's actually an interesting little knife. I think it's a 9CR. Awful. The world's worst sheath. This thing has no retention. None. None, none, none. Has some uh, paracord and uh, retainer you might be able to salvage though. Yeah, awful sheath. Cool little knife. It's a nice thick chunk of what I, like I said, 9CR. RMJ design. Oh, I didn't re realize that. That's cool. And the part number. Uh, no discussion about which steel they used on this, but I'm pretty sure this one was 9CR. Uh, I had this one and the LCK, the original LCK um, from CRKT Ruger. Hated the LCK. Uh, it came in with a bunch of QC issues. I re 
kind of fixed. Gave that knife away because it just kind of irritated to see that some major company had let a knife with those issues get through without fixing them first. And uh, fortunately, they got it to somebody who could fix it. But uh, really like the looks of this knife. I keep telling myself I need to make some, make a new sheath for it so I can carry it. But look at that. Yeah, it's got a cylinder for a lanyard bead, which is really cool. It's heavy. I mean, that is a heavy little bugger. But uh, I really like the shape of this knife. I think it could make a great little EDC. I think it was like $20 when I bought it. Maybe even less than that. Um, honestly, it's a nice little knife. This is one I will probably end up using once I get a respectable sheath made for it. But this is the CRKT Ruger Cordite. Again, affordable, EDCable size. Again, you'll just have to make your own sheath. Just expect to do that. Um, that may actually be a fun one to send off to uh, somebody in the community who does leather work and see if Brother Joe might be able to make me uh, a good sheath for that. A nice little Scout Carry leather sheath. Something along those lines, but it also comes with a pocket clip and some other stuff you can put on that absolutely horrible sheet if you'd like. So, CRKT Ruger Cordite. You starting to pick up on what's going on here yet? <laughs> now, this one has my address on the front because... I got this as a bonus for joining an organization. An organization you will see here. I'm going to take this off camera because it's apparently got to be flipped upside down to get out. So, look at this mess. <laughs> yes, this is a Browning game kit that uh, I don't remember this knife being in. I just remembered the, uh, the hatchet there. Um, Made in China, Browning, doesn't tell me what the steel is, probably 420 or something. Horribly uneven grind, absolutely a cheap piece of crap. Um, oh look, bonus, <laughs> tip down only carry, the right side only carry as well. So um, yeah, a lot of these are not the greatest knives. They're just a knife that I had, and I suddenly realized I had a lot of knives, in case you haven't figured this out yet, a lot of knives made by members of the firearms industry. <laughs> so that's what this is. I joined the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation uh, for a few years. Uh, I was actually trying to go work for them. But uh, haven't used either one of these. I need to get this little hatchet out and see if it'll actually do anything. But uh, none of this, I don't think, is really all that valuable. We're getting ready to look at the two that probably are the most valuable, if anything is. But let's put this awesome thing back in the box. But this was free for joining the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. So, put it back in away. The there you go. So... <clears throat> A knife and a non knife but all cutting objects now as well as these last two I'm getting ready to show you there's also a Winchester fixed blade a really really I mean crappy on this level of crappy uh, Smith and Wesson uh, folding uh, assisted folding knife with the the glass breaker and the strap cutting notch, all that, just, yeah. So the, t the two that immediately come to mind that aren't in here, um, yeah, they're, they're stuff you've probably seen all over the place. Now, this one is interesting. This is something I don't think most of you will have ever seen. This was a promotional knife for a small outdoors place down in South Carolina. Um, I was down there and uh, a, a girl I was seeing happened to want to go pick one of these up for her dad. I was like, ah, I like that. 
is interesting. I've never seen a knife by this company. So, <laughs> let's take you for a walk around my Leopold. What is this? A big rock fixed blade? I have no idea what steel this is. Um, this one could be maybe something a little nicer, but it is made in China. You do have a, you know, a brass bolster there, some brass pins, some type of curly maple or something like that as far as your handles. One side definitely nicer than the other. But all in all, Leopold on both sides, so extra Leopold billboarding. But uh, nice blade. I've never used this one. I've never carried it. It did come with a nice leather sheath. I need to get some leather on, I'm sure. Probably drying out because I don't ever take these guys out and mess around with them or anything like that. But I find them interesting. And uh, this one was kind of the one that as soon as I bought it, I real started realizing how many knives I had from the Pew Pew industry. And I found it rather entertaining. Kind of funny even. But that is a Leopold Big Rock. Made for them by somebody in China. I don't know who made it. Of course, nowadays we have ways of finding those sort of things out. But, um, yeah, that was a $40 knife back in the day. I mean, it's, it's a comfortable knife. It's, uh, I'm not big on the brass and wood, but it was a good looking knife and an affordable one to put into this collection. So that's what I did. And last, but certainly not least, what is going on? Oh, that's part of the knife. That's what's up. I, was, I thought the box was freaking out. It was part of the uh, blade slip inside, the cardboard slip. And this box is just soft. So, the very last one. And kind of the piece de resistance of my of this collection. This is my one and only Benchmade knife. You know, holy crap. It's nothing near. It's a Benchmade machete. Almost. <laughs> this is the HK Fate. It was made by Benchmade. I've not used this one yet. I need to get it out and use it. It is a lightweight knife, full bla full tang, or at least a partial full tang. Uh, maybe a rat tail. I forget what's in there. But 440C HK model 1420 it is made as i said by benchmade this is the one and only benchmade i own <laughs> has a very short handle back here that just fits my chubby hands got a little bit of room but it mean the swell and everything that is on this knife fits me perfectly and that neoprene handle will eat up a lot of shock when i do finally get out to use this Choking up, you got a bit of a recurve here, a nice, long, easy to sharpen recurve. So this thing should cut, and I have already watched videos on it before I bought it. This was going to be my primary outdoor fixed blade, and right as I bought it, they stopped making it, so I put it away and uh, never used it. I need to sharpen it. It's got the factory edge on it, which is crap. Absolutely one of the jankiest sheaths I've ever seen. And originally it was about 90 bucks. It was not a cheap knife. It uh, took me a long time of doing some research to figure out I was going to buy this knife. And then, like I said, right as I did, uh, Benchmade and HK parted ways and they stopped making this knife. So I put it away just in case it might be worth something. Or uh, to see if I found something else I might like more. And I ended up buying that Fox Parang. And I never kind of looked back. But I, having this out, I do love that knife. So, that's it. That is the Pew Pew Manufactured Knives I Own. 
at least maybe a little bit more than half of them. So there's a couple more out there. You've got uh, the Hogue Sigs. I need to get one of those put into this collection. Um, we have the, uh, oh, who is it? Uh, I want to say Kimber made a knife. I've got a few others anyway. Uh, if you have one in your collection you're thinking about getting rid of, let me know. Um, I'm not looking for super high-end knives for the collection, but there's always going to be a few that are going to be maybe a little nicer to put into the collection. So I'll think about it. But uh, if you have one and you think it would go in this collection, let me know. I may uh, trade you something or, or buy it off of you or do whatever, work something out. But that's what I got for you today. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys soon. This is Grumpy. Until I see you again, and I do hope I see you again. Stay well, be kind, do good. That's it. I'm going to take all these and put them back away, except for, no, this guy. <laughs> this guy is coming outside with me. That's it. This is Grumpy, and I'm out.